everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel and welcome back to Fallen Necromancer Week. This is our second video uh, before the Necromancer Week. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far, and uh, yeah, I'm loving these new terrain kits. As you guys can see, I've got a new, another shipment in uh, with a few more runes of Dorgal Door, another Witch King, a few dice sets, another book, because I've already got my copy here. Um, and uh, some of this stuff is to give away to you guys. So if you guys haven't heard about the giveaway for Fallen Necromancer Week just yet, um, we are giving away uh, a new Witch King, plastic Witch King. Uh, foot and mounted, as well as a full the Necromancer supplement book as well. So if you guys would like to make, uh, join in on the uh, giveaway, make sure you are subscribed. This is a subscribers only giveaway. It's a bit of a me to say thank you guys for, uh, you know, helping out the channel and, you know, just, uh, just a bit of a thank you in general, I guess. Um, so yeah, you must be subscribed, uh, like the video and comment uh, what scenario from Fall of the Necromancer is your favorite. So you can comment on any one, one of my videos. Um, Preferably for the Necromancer, but easy to find you guys. But uh, yeah, it's uh, if you guys would like to win uh, a Plastic Witch King or one of the new, uh, the new book, uh, that is all you have to do. You have to yeah, just leave a comment on what is your favourite scenario uh, of uh, of uh, for the Necromancer. And I say scenarios because in this video we're going to be going through the scenarios uh, in this book and uh, going through them and just giving my uh, thoughts and opinions about them and uh, giving you my favourite ones as well because I've gone through them. Um, and uh, I think there was a, you know, we did a, we did our first impressions, a bit of a, break, a brief breakdown of the scenarios in the first, uh, in the first video. Um, but we're going to go into detail about, so uh, you know, what these scenarios. A couple of them are, are new. Uh, some of them are old as well. Some of them are from uh, actual fans as well, such as uh, Tom and Damien from SBG. One of their scenarios is in here. A bit, bit sweet, but uh, it's still in here, which is very cool. So we're going to get straight into it. We are looking at the scenarios. So. Hopefully, I should uh, flash some uh, pho videos or uh, you know pho uh, pho uh, photos on screen for you guys, um, to show, so you know where I'm up to. Um, but we are looking at the first scenario, the founding of Dolgor Door, which I think is a very cool scenario. Um, for those of you who are, I guess, love scenario play and already play, as you guys know, I, I, I'm a massive fan of it. Um, in my last video, I believe I said that unfortunately the Necromancer was out of stock at the moment. I went on. Uh, I went online on Monday night onto the GW website because I was going to put another order in to get more rooms at Dogwood Door. Um, you know, a video about that coming next week. Um, and uh, and to, to get a few things that we're going to need for all the scenarios in here because I, I am planning on hopefully uh, at some stage doing the, the full uh, campaign of this, um, which is going to be very cool. And unfortunately, the Necromancer has been uh, sold out for a, a couple of months. Um, I, I've seen um, when it first got announced. I kind of wanted to get it then. Uh, this was back in August, I believe, at Articon. So um, yeah, and on Monday night, he's actually back in stock. So I ordered him like that, and uh, yeah, got everything else I needed. Got some bat swarms. Uh, got a few other things as well. Um, so yeah, it's very cool. So first of all, we have the founding of Dolgul Door. Now this was this one's very cool. This is uh, a thousand years, I believe, um, after Sauron got defeated the Last Alliance. He's basically trying to make his stronghold in Dol Guldor. But there are some woodsmen around, which are very cool. There's a, they are basically a profile for a warrior Rohan. There's also a woodsman chief, and which is basically a captain of Rohan. So I think you could do some very good conversions um, of woodsman and uh, chieftain. I'm thinking you could just use the chieftain and maybe Bayon. I think that could be a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool way to use him. Because um, you don't see him in many uh, scenarios, unfortunately. Um, and the woodsman, I think you could do some very cool conversion, like I said, I might be planning on doing some of these, so... I have been looking around to see if there's any, like, woodsman minis, and there really isn't. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to do some conversions. If you guys like to see that, let me know in the comment section below. But, uh, yeah, so we are... It's basically Sauron, uh, the Necromancer, I should say. 12 Warriors with, you know, with stuff. 
Um, and on the good side, we have the Woodsman Chief on with shield, then the 12 Woodsman, four with shield, four with throwing spear, and four with bow. Um, and basically, Sauron's about basically has to kill them, essentially. Um, and the, uh, the Woodsmen have to defeat Sauron. That's it, the Necromancer. Uh, the thing about the Necromancer, though, he only has 12 will points. But uh, of course, if he had 25 will points, it'd be pretty easy for the Necromancer to win this scenario. But uh, with you know, with him only having 12 will, he's going to have to stay back. He could probably do a few magic, magical powers. Um, but uh, yeah, also all evil models in this scenario have terror, which is uh, interesting. Um, you know, obviously with the necromancer around, that's going to happen. Um, there's also a hut in the middle of the board where the woodsman sets up, uh, so cool, could, you know, it could have a nice scenery piece, uh, making a uh, wooded hut for them. Um, but uh, yeah, so this basically uh, sound uh, the necromancer. I said he's not quite sound, but necromancer. Uh, he's trying to make his stronghold in Dogwood War, and he doesn't want anyone to find out. Um, obviously, you know, he's still trying to get uh, get up. You know, his power. He's very weak at the moment, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think that could be a very cool scenario. And uh, you know, what, what doesn't require a lot of models. Um, you know, compared to some other books like Gondor at War, Rohan at War, um, these scenarios are not as small as Scaring the Shire. Um, or, uh, what was it, uh, Quest of the Ring Bearer, but I think it's a bit, a bit in the middle, um, which is very cool. Very much uh, more skirmishy than anything else. Next up we have the Gathering Evil, so um, this is basically, uh, ne the Necromancer has uh, established Dog Lodori's Stronghold, and there is uh, darkness coming uh, coming from it as well. So um, again, we have uh, the Necromancer and 12 Orc Warriors, the same as before, and on the good side we have a Merkwood Ranger Captain and 10 Merkwood Rangers. Basically, the objective uh, for the good model is to escape from the northern board edge, and the evil player can win if they slay all the elves. That is pretty much it. Um, again, the necromancer only has 12 will points, and uh, good models can only see up to six inches in this scenario. So that doesn't me that does mean that they won't be able to shoot, or not very effectively anyway. Because um, at, at the end of the day, you could just like you know stand back and shoot with the elves, um, but uh, you know with them only you know being able to see six inches. It's going to be a lot harder for them to um, complete that objective. These for early scenarios are very uh, pushed towards evil winning, uh, which is you know not, not too bad in the end. Um, then we have the corruption of the Green Lord, and this is when uh, the Necromancer's uh, darkness, I guess, he, you know, his villainous side um, has corrupted a lot of the Greenwood, and uh, a lot of Ripley's and uh, foul things have entered and uh, taken up residence in the Greenwood and have converting into Merkwood. So this time we have two Merkwood Rangers, twenty Merkwood Ranger, uh, sorry, two Merkwood Ranger Captains, and twenty Merkwood Rangers. For evil, we have four Castellans of Dolgaldor, six Giant Spiders, six Merkwood Spiders, six Fellwags, and two Bat Swarms. Now, uh, as I said, I did I did want to uh, do this uh, campaign on the channel uh, at some point, and uh, I don't have any Castellans of Dolgaldor, didn't have any Giant Spiders, don't have any Bat Swarms. Um, so on that order that I did with the Necromancer, I ordered two Bat Swarms. I ordered two packs of the Castellans, the ones that just came back, um, because they only you only get three in a pack, unfortunately, you don't get four. Um, so I'm going to have six all day. Um, and the Giant Spiders, again, I'm, like I said in my last video, I'm not a massive fan of the Giant Spider uh, aesthetic. I think they're very uh, fantasy for me, well, I'm a fantasy. Um, I'm very much more akin to the Merkwood Spiders. Um, but I need to get more Merkwood Spiders anyway, I only have six at the moment. Um, you only need six for every scenario in this campaign. Um, but, uh, of course, we're doing the Hobbit campaign at some point as well, and we need a lot more than that. Um, so, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to order three more packs of Merkwood Spiders, and uh, so that'll give me another six, and it'll give me also six Giant Spiders for this campaign as well. Uh, so basically, for this objective, uh, the game lasts 10 turns, so it's a turn-based uh, turn game, which I always uh, enjoy. It's, you know, it gives a bit more of an edge, a bit more uh, uh, fun, fun, funness about it, I guess. Um, and the good player wins if two or three of the objectives are corrupted at the end of the game. So it's basically like a tug of war. We have uh, five objectives, uh, so three in the, basically a central line in the middle of, uh, of the board. Two are uh, basically at the one at each side of the uh, good deployment zone. And uh, evil deploy 12 inches uh, from the southern board edge, good deploy 12 inches from the northern board edge. And you're basically doing a tug of war. So how to corrupt an objective is if an evil player, uh, the evil models uh, stay in combat, uh, sorry, stay in contact with an objective, and they don't fight, they don't move, they don't shoot, they don't do anything, um, they, they corrupt that objective essentially. Now it's not removed from the board, if a good model gets into contact with it, and exact again, doesn't do anything that turn, uh, it can uncorrupt it, it can basically save it. Um, so it's basically, uh, you know, the evil, pl evil players trying to corrupt the Greenwood, and evil players trying to 
heal it, essentially. Um, so a very much tug of war game, which is interesting. I don't think we've had any scenario like this before, so it'll be interesting to play. Next up, we have Lurking in the Shadows. This brings out the Spider Queen on a very cool board. Uh, so far, all the boards uh, have been a 4x4 Merkwood board. So if you want to make a Merkwood board, you can have a lot of, uh, a 4x4 Merkwood board. You can have a lot of uh, playability out of this. Uh, I'm definitely thinking about doing this. Um, probably more of a, more of a modular board, I would say, uh, I would try to make. Um, but this one brings out the Spider Queen. Of course, the Spider Queen's come back as well with her Groovelink, which is very cool. Um, I ordered her as well, so probably expect an unboxing of her and uh, possibly the Necromancer next week when I do get them, um, which would be very cool. So again, this one is two Merkwood Ranger Captains and 20 Merkwood Rangers. Evil side, we have the Spider Queen, six Giant Spiders, six Merkwood Spiders, and two Bad Swarms. Um, so there we go. So again, it's, you know, uh, you know you, you've seen this, you've seen this uh, trend of the same participants every every game. You're not having like massive like, you know, uh, 38 Merkwood Rangers because you know, that's that's not that's not how it's been in the last few uh, supplements, which I'm, which I'm really enjoying. And basically, uh, the good force basically has to kill the Spider Queen. Um, and the evil force has to uh, win if all the Elder Slim before this happens. So it's basically do, do or die, essentially. And good player deploys six inches within the uh, center of the board. Um, we have a very cool uh, board, as you guys can see on the screen, uh, where they, there's basically a cave on the right hand side, on the eastern side of the board, where the Spider Queen's lair is. Again, I've got a few ideas of how to make this. Um, I think there is a, I think there is a uh, article in Battle Games of Middle Earth um, that uh, you know kind of makes spider nets or something like this, uh, with uh, some tissue paper or some. I, I think you could do something very cool and. Uh, Creepy with spider nests and, uh, and and the cave for that as well. Um, so maybe I might try that on the channel if you guys would like to see that. Do let me know in, again in the comment section below. Um, but basically, uh, shooting attacks against the spider queen suffer a minus, minus one penalty rolling to hit. Additionally, uh, her, you only be able to wound the spider queen with a six. Um, so again, uh, and and the spiders keep coming back um, from the spider nest. There's four spider nests in, on the board, one in the center of each two by two. And uh, yeah, any any spider that die, uh, that you know is dies um, can come back uh, in the next turn, which is cool. Now we have a very cool scenario that uh, was uh, very much I think I think it was Jay he put a um, uh, there was a Warhammer community post uh, about about this uh, about the scenario and just about the book in general um, a couple of weeks ago. And this is one one of his scenarios that he really enjoyed. It's called Flight to the East. Now this is not in the movie. This is from the book. Um, when Gandalf goes to Dumbledore a couple hundred years before The Hobbit, basically finds the Necromancer is there. The Necromancer flees into the east, um, and then he obviously comes. He comes back later, but um, this is the first time Gandalf goes to Dumbledore, um, and it's very cool. You have some uh, objective markers, six objective markers, um, and uh, a couple of castles of Dumbledore. You have uh, Gandalf, obviously for the good side. That's only Gandalf. And evil side, we have the Necromancer of Dumbledore and four castellans of Dumbledore on a four by four Dumbledore board. Um, and then we have six objective, uh, six markers essentially. One of them is the Necromancer. And basically, Gandalf has to try and find the Necromancer and escape the board. Um, and then uh, evil side just has to kill Gandalf, I believe. Yeah, the good side wins if the Necromancer has been revealed and Gandalf escapes the board via any boardage. And the evil player wins if the Necromancer has not been revealed when he escapes the board uh, via the eastern boardage. Any other result is draw. So basically, trying to hide the Necromancer. Um, I guess you could kill Gandalf as well, but Gandalf does have a, uh, a couple of cool abilities um, to help him, I guess. Um, so, such as the cost of deception. So, uh, sustaining his disguise is a draining process, one that takes a toll from the Dark Lord. So, the Necromancer loses the war point at the end of each move phase in which he has not yet been revealed. So, this is this is back him back at 25 will. So, there's nothing about uh, him not having uh, all the will that, that he has. And also, Gandalf has two attacks, which is a very cool. Gandalf the Grey with two attacks. That could be uh, that could be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, uh, again, Shadow of the Necromancer revealing the, revealing the Necromancer. Um, he basically he does not deploy at the start of the game. There are six 40 millimeter uh, markers that can move uh, around the board. Um, so a, a very cool scenario. I think uh, I think it could be uh, a lot of fun um, and one that I could probably you could probably expect very soon on the channel. Once I do create that uh, dog will for it for sure. Then we have the watchful peace. Um, when Sauron uh, fled back into the east once Gandalf, because uh, obviously Gandalf uh, 
in the canon uh, did find uh, you know the Necromancer. He fled into the east, and uh, there was a couple of hundred years, I believe. Is it four hundred years? I'm sure you one of you guys will let me know uh, in the comments. Um, and it was called the Watch with Peace, where Sauron, uh, the Necromancer, fled into the east, and you know he, he stayed there for a while to get, gather up his strength. Um, and in this scenario, it's basically. Uh, Legolas Greenleaf, so we have a Legolas uh, Merkle Ranger Captain and 10 Merkle Rangers against two old captains with shield and 24 poor quarries with stuff. And uh, they basically they, they, they basically ambush the orcs. So the game lasts until the turn uh, in which the good side wins if they can reduce the evil side to 25% of their starting numbers, i.e. six models remaining. And the evil side wins if they can reduce the good side to 25% of their uh, starting number, three models remaining. So. Um, if Legolas is slain, the game ends immediately and the evil side wins, so that is a special rule. So you probably, as the evil player, you probably want to uh, go against Legolas. Um, but good models may roll fail to hit rolls when making shooting attacks. If they did not move during that preceding move phase, so if you stay still and don't move, you can uh, uh, yeah, re-roll fail to hit rolls, which is amazing for Merchant Rangers. Um, oh, good models, so even Legolas can do it as well, which is crazy uh, when you think about it. Legolas re roll to hit it. Um, even though he's a, you know, probably the best archer in the game. Um, yeah, very cool model. Uh, sorry, a very cool scenario. Um, again, on a 4x4 Merkle board. So, getting a lot of use out of that 4x4 Merkle board. Again, the next one we are clearing the nest. So, this is uh, uh, more spiders. Very cool scenario because we have Legolas, we also have Tariel, so we have some Tariel action finally. She's only in this one scenario in the book, unfortunately, but it's cool to see some Tariel action in here. Um, and 10 Merkwood Rangers, and the evil side is 6 Merkwood Spiders and 6 Giant Spiders. And um, I believe the objectives are uh, the good side wins if the spider nest is destroyed, and the evil side wins if the good side is wiped out. Um, and uh, the spider nest has 3 wounds, and will only ever be uh, wounded on the roll of a natural 6. Um, so yeah, very, very cool. And uh, yeah, again, whenever a spider model is slain, uh, they can repeat, uh, uh, reappear. On a roll of a five plus in the next star, uh, in the next star uh, turn, and uh, they can attack. They get, you know, they can charge on the turn they uh, they come in, which is very cool. Then we have one that was in the White Dwarf, uh, I believe. I want to say 2018, 2019. Um, the attack on Roskabel. Um, there was one of two Radagast scenarios that are in this book from White Dwarf. Uh, so the attack on Roskabel. Um, this is uh, Radagast, as you see in the next journey, is going around trying to uh, heal all the animals around his house. Um, his house is in the center of the board. I believe, as I said in the last uh, in the last video, that I believe on the GBHL, um, Damien and I believe it was James Long, uh, GBHL Damien and James Long, they played this scenario. It was a very cool scenario, um, very uh, nail biting to the end of it. We have Radagast and we have four Merkwood Spires, and that's it on a two by two Merkwood board. Um, like I said, with Radagast house in the center and uh, six objectives are uh, evenly placed around it, and uh, he basically needs to heal. The creatures so you just has to get into base contact uh, heal them and I believe it's still the same uh, yeah so binding is moving base contact with a marker so long as he's not engaged in combat when a creature has been su successfully rescued uh, remove the marker from play and whenever he does that he uh, regains a fate point uh, lost early in the battle um, because of course you know uh, you know Merkwood spiders they're going to uh, you know, shoot him with their uh, <laughs> Venom spider webs, and uh, he can become paralyzed, and you don't want that for Radagast because you know, <laughs> former good spiders shooting at Radagast and uh, him being paralyzed, nom, 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 nom. he is not going to survive too long. Next up, we have the exploration of the exploration of Dolgador, I should say. This is on a two by two uh, Dolgador board. Um, and uh, again, one of the scenarios when it first came out, I did want to play this, but forward, and that's part of the reason why I started building a Dolgador board because we had the uh, uh, I'll, I'll put up a photo of it now, um, you should probably saw it in the last video, but I started making a double door board uh, back in uh, 2017 when the um, when there and back again came out. I think it was the start of 2018 when I stopped it and uh, that's part, part of the reason I did it because I like making scenario boards. So boards that are very thematic like double door or Dale um, that you can play the scenarios on every single scenario that you need to play it. Well, you can play on that board, which I think is very cool. Um, and that's the reason I'm going to be doing that. I'm also going to be doing a, starting a new series, spoilers, uh, about building Middle Earth and building scenario boards uh, concerned with different places in Middle Earth that uh, have a few scenarios on them. And I'm going to make scenario boards for those places that I think 
you know, it could be fun, it could be interesting. And uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. What would you guys like me to, uh, me to build? Um, I think that could be very cool. And again, uh, we got some statues in the ruins of Dogador. Um, the, you know, like the one that the Witch King comes out of in Unexpected Journey. Um, and you can use those statues in, on this board, um, which is very cool. And they can be used in the, uh, in the scenario, which is, uh, which is cool. Um, and so you need six statues, so you need six rooms of Dogador. Um, I've got three here, two more on the way, and I'm at least going to be getting a couple more um, for, for my, for my Dogador board. So we, uh, we will have to wait and see. Um, about that. Next up we have Thrain the Broken. Now this one was uh, originally created by Damien and Tom from GBHL uh, for SPG I believe issue 4. Um, now uh, it's uh, it's their scenario that they, they, they made and actually does say in the designer's notes the scenario was originally created as a fan made by Damien O'Byrne and Thomas Harrison when the extended edition of The Hobbit The Battle of Five Armies it should be the Desolation of Snow, because that's when it happens. Uh, it's a bit of a typo there. Um, came out. They had kindly allowed us to make some uh, small tweaks to update scenario and publish it within their supplement. So the, the main part of the scenario, the main bulk of it, is from SPG issue 4. Um, again, I think uh, Jamie and Damien played it on the on GBHL, so go and check that out if you haven't already. Um, but uh, it was a very, very cool scenario. I think, uh, I think this could be very fun. A 2x2 dungeon board. Uh, on Dog with Door. And again, I've got plans so I know where on my board this is going to go. It's going to go in the middle um, where you can take it off, go into, through the dungeons, and be able to play the scenario. And uh, I think it'd be cool. I think it would be a very cool to play. Um, I've, I've obviously watched them play. I haven't watched it for a while now, but uh, I have watched them play it a couple of times and uh, it does seem a lot of fun. It's, it's what SPG was made for, I believe. SPG was made for little things like this. You know, very small model count, and uh, it's, it's where SPG thrives, I believe. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. Next up, whew, we have the Capture of the Grey Wizard. We're almost there, guys. Capture of the Grey Wizard. This was published in There and Back Again. Um, and I believe nothing has changed. Yeah, I believe nothing has changed um, in this scenario. So... Um, if you guys have read there and back again, um, this is basically the same scenario. It's basically when Azog finds uh, Gandalf and Thrain, so it's probably the extended edition, uh, because you know, Thrain was in the theatrical edition, and uh, Gandalf tries to escape with Thrain off the board, and the Necromancer comes and uh, wrecks their day, essentially. Uh, it does say here, winning the scenario is very hard for the good side, but not impossible. Gandalf can likely escape if he, if he forsakes Thrain, but that's not really in Gandalf's character. Um, that he wants to do that so uh, you know again another very cool scenario um, and this was the original scenario that uh, I wanted to build a double door board for because I think a 2 by 3 double door board could be interesting but uh, with all these scenarios on double door my board has gotten quite a lot bigger um, as you guys will see in the video next week hopefully next up we have a very very interesting scenario which uh, when I first saw it um, I wanted to play it instantly. I got mostly all the um, participants for this. This is Make Haste to Dogal Door. So this is after uh, Gandalf has sent uh, Radagast to go and warn Galadriel about the Necromancer. He's on his way back to Dogal Door and uh, he's uh, being assaulted by spiders. And there are four spider nests, so again, a very cool terrain uh, project in the, uh, in the works here for this one. Now, on a 6x4 Merkwood board, uh, in this case, so we're going to have to extend that Merkwood board to, a, to uh, another 2 feet, uh, but that's okay. And then uh, we have uh, Radius on Slay, Radius on Ground on Slay, and that's it, for the good side. And on the evil side, we have 6 Merkwood Spiders and 6 Giant Spiders. And uh, the, the objectives are simple, so Radius starts on the north board edge, and uh, the Spiders start within uh, six, uh, 3 inches, yeah, 3 inches of the Spider Nest. Um, that are in the uh, basically the two thirds uh, lower version portion of the board, and uh, again, spider the spider nets, uh, spiders come back on, on, on a roll of a four or five plus again, um, uh, whenever they're slain. So you know, con constant spiders, and uh, it's, it's basically simple. If Radagast escapes the southern board edge, he wins. If they kill Radagast, they win. Um, so a very simple scenario and uh, a very cool uh, villain, uh, special rule here, I should say, called these are Ruskabel rabbits. And in, the, in his bid to reach Gandalf in time, Radagast is driving his slaves so fast that anything which gets in the way may well be run over. And I wish 
I wish he had this uh, ability in a normal game, in, in his normal specials. Um, whilst riding his sleigh, whenever Radagast charges into combat, the sleigh will inflict two strength three hits upon it, one model it has charged. If after this charge Radagast is unengaged and has movement remaining, he may complete his move in any way uh, the good model, uh, the good player wishes, and it may even charge again if able. So that means he's basically like a mini Momok, um, which I think is very hilarious. And um, basically, he's going so fast that he'll trample anything. So you basically want to go against spiders. Um, I think the giant spiders are probably a lot easier to to kill. Um, so two strength three hits if you kill it. So you'd want to charge into one spider um, because you can only inflict uh, damage onto one model. So you want to go into one spider. Kill it, hopefully, go into the next fighter, kill that one, kick, and you can basically, you know, chain it and go around. He's basically like a mini woman, which I think is hilarious and should be in his pro normal profile. But I think that could get very, um, very OP. I think a lot of people, it would make people use Radagast on Slayer a lot more, which, like, you know, you don't really see him, like, believe too much. Um, but maybe in the uh, new army list, in the new Legendary Legion, you might. So we'll have to wait and see about that one. And we come to the last scenario it is the fall of the Necromancer. Uh, again, another one that was in there and back again, which I don't believe has changed too much. Uh, I believe it's the same as before. But um, when this one came out, uh, you know, after watching that scene in the Battle of the Five Armies, it's probably the best scene in, in one of the best scenes in the film, in my opinion. And um, I definitely wanted to play this. So it's very, it's a very, because it's such a thematic scenario. And uh, I know Lucky over on Zop Zop has made the courtyard for this already. I know one other people have as well, and uh, I'm planning to do this one as well. But this is probably the last uh, piece of the puzzle for my Dolgood Award. I'm planning on starting from the gatehouse and the bridge uh, first, and then working my way backwards. Um, but uh, I think it's a very cool scenario. I've always wanted to play this, and it's, like I said, it's a very thematic scenario. We have Gandalf in the center with the Keeper of the Dungeons on there as well, and Galadriel, and that's it, and then everyone else comes on later. So we have Gandalf the Grey, Saruman the White, Radagast the Brown the Slay, Galadriel Lady of Light, and Erwan Master of Rivendell for the good side, so all of the White Council, and for Evil we have the Necromancer, all nine Nazgul Dolgador, and the Keeper of the Dungeons. Now I have, er now, since this last order, latest order I did, I've got every single participant in here. I have Gandalf, everyone's got a Gandalf, pretty much. Um, so the Saruman, the Galadriel, and the uh, Elrond, the Vanquishers, the Necromancer. I did pick that one up because I never uh, had that one before, so I've picked it up since it's come back. It has come back in a, uh, not a made to order, but it's just come back to the range, which is very cool. And uh, I do have Radagast the Brown Slay, I just haven't built him yet. Um, and of course, I've got ne the Necromancer coming. I've got all nine Nazgul, Dog with Door, and I do have Keeper of the Dungeons. Again, None of these guys are built or painted except for Gandalf. I have a Gandalf built, built and painted, but everyone else is not uh, built and painted. So probably going to be a while for uh, to, to play this scenario, but um, again, one of the ones I do want to play uh, very, very soon. And that is the end of the, uh, of the scenarios. But we get into the fall of the Necromancer campaign. Now, uh, again, whoa, that one came down. Um, just like in, uh, I think, just like in every uh, Middle Earth book recently, um, we do have a campaign system that can go, uh, that you can link the scenarios. And uh, depending on who wins the previous scenario, if good win, something good happens to them. If evil win, something good happens to them. Um, and this is no exception. So such as in the first scenario, the founding of Dol Guldor. In the next scenario, the gathering of evil. If good win, three elves need to escape the border, board edge for the good player to win. And if evil win, uh, five elves need to escape the board for the good player to win. Um, and I believe, let's have a look. Duh, 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 duh. Uh, good side wins if any four good models uh, leave the board edge. So um, it's a little bit easier if the good player win the previous scenario, and it's a little bit harder if evil win the uh, previous scenario. So, uh, and that is for every single scenario here. So um, it can impact the next scenario or can impact a uh, scenario further down the line which is uh, very, very cool. But that is the uh, that is all the scenarios in this book, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if I had to pick a top three, I would say um, Make Haste to Double Door with Radagast. I think is one a very cool one. Again, I've always wanted to play The Fall of the Necromancer. I think that's an easy one to pick. Um, but if I'm not picking that one, Thrain the Broken is a cool one. Exploration, like there's so many cool ones in here. Like the Exploration of Double Door, um, Friend the Broken, I've always wanted to play Capture of the Grey Wizard, 
I just think that's a very cool scenario with Azog, uh, Sahana Orcs, uh, the Necromancer, Thrain, and Gandalf. Um, you know, them just trying to escape. Again, one with the Spider Queen, uh, whatever one was called, if I can find it, Lurking in the Shadows. I've never used the Spider Queen, I've never fought against the Spider Queen, so I think that'd be a very cool one to play as well. Um, and some very cool terrain on there as well, like the massive cave for the Spider Queen and some spider nests. Um, I think uh, th this, this book has made me want to do some more conversions, obviously, for those woodsmen, and uh, do a lot more terrain, such as spider nests and. Uh, some cool boards as well so if you guys like to see that let me know in the comment section below um but yeah i'm gonna get out, of, get out of here thank you guys so very much for watching let me know your uh if you guys like to enter the giveaway make sure that let me know your favorite scenario and let me know your favorite three scenarios in this uh in this book as well in the comment section below but uh yeah i appreciate you guys all tuning in hope you guys are enjoying full of the necromancer week so far um and there's a lot more videos on the way next i will be going through the legendary legends and the army list we're also going to be unboxing the new Witch King and uh, going through the Ruins of Dolgood Door. Got a, a hobby vlog dedicated to Fallen Necromancer this week. We're going to be unboxing some old models, of course, when I, when we're, when I retrieve them. And uh, i got a few other cool videos in the pipeline as well. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy them. And if, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys all tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, happy game.